In our modern era, there are many ways you can secure your smartphone or tablet. You'll find such technologies like security codes or traditional patterns. you also find the Face ID which is considered a breakthrough in the world of technology. There are also more security options such as Voice ID biometrics and finally the fingerprint. And the truth is, any security measure we mentioned earlier could be bypassed except your fingerprint. Your voice fingerprint, for example, can be bypassed by playing your own audio recording and your facial fingerprint, although it's very sophisticated, it is also not impossible to bypass. There are many YouTube videos where twins, brothers or sisters can unlock the device and if your device is locked with a password, it is possible that someone close to you can easily guess the passphrase such as your birthday or a special day such as your marriage anniversary if you even remember it. Even though a fingerprint is a very simple thing, it's one of the greatest characteristics ever found in the human body. No one can imitate your fingerprint, no matter what. There is no way that two people can have exactly the same fingerprint. And even identical twins who are identical in every way still have a completely different fingerprint. Your fingerprint is simply something special of your own. Welcome. This is Brainspace and in this episode we will explain why two people can't have the same fingerprint. Before we start, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to get our latest videos first. Fingerprint is a group of high ridges in the skin, and these hills are connected to sweat glands, located exactly under your skin. So your fingers leave a trace of your fingerprint on anything you touch. These ridges form a spiral and a circular pattern on the surface of the finger itself, and between them contains a series of depressions. The strange thing is that these patterns don't take a random form. In fact, the fingerprint pattern in humans are actually divided into three different types. The first type is called the arc pattern, and the fingerprint is a pattern of symmetrical arches that are placed on top of each other regularly. And this type is found in about 5% of humans. The other type of fingerprint is called a swirling pattern, and this type of fingerprint is a circular shape and found in around 30-35% to of people. The third and most common type is the ring pattern, which is a ring that starts from the side of the finger and then heads up and wraps around itself and this type is widespread across 60-65% to 65 of all humans. Once you focus on the pattern of your fingerprint, you can easily identify which of these three types you belong to. A years ago, the Chinese noticed that the fingerprint is something very unique. So emperors and rulers signed important documents with a thumbprint, print, which was considered proof that it was approved by the king. With the advent of the 19th century, the scientific community began to pay more attention to the fingerprint, and they discovered that it was not just a prominent lines in the fingers, but something very special and very unique. In 1877, Henry Folds devised a way to photograph the fingerprint on paper using black ink and the English scientist Sir Francis Galton proved in 1892 that there are no two identical fingerprints in the whole world and that the pattern of the print is something characteristic of a man throughout his life. A fingerprint can't be matched between two people, even if those two people are identical twins from the same fertilized egg. All that preceded Infer gave great confidence to the police to use fingerprints in their investigations and accept them as strong evidence in cases. In the beginning of 1901, the Scotland Yard Police in London began to adopt a system called the Fingerprint Identification System. All countries seek to record the fingerprints of all criminals and outlaws in order to facilitate the task of detecting future crimes in case of finding traces of fingerprints at the same crime scene. One of the amazing things is that the fingerprint in the fetus begins to form during the first weeks, and between the fourth and sixth month, it is completely formed. Most theories confirm that the fingerprint grows from a layer of the skin called the basal layer. The human skin consists of two layers, the outer layer called the epidermis and the inner layer called the dermis. The reason for the appearance of the fingerprint is that this basal layer grows faster than the other two layers and therefore with pressure it can penetrate the layers of the skin and appear in the form of prostrusions and ridges in the skin, which in the end is the fingerprint in its known form. Because the basal layer is embedded deep under the surface of the skin, it is very difficult to damage this pattern through superficial skin injuries. What does this mean? If we argue that someone has a wound on the outer layer of the skin of their finger and this injury has resulted in a deformity of their fingerprint, will their fingerprint be changed forever? Actually, no. When someone's outer layer of the skin gets injured and it doesn't cause any damage to the inner layer, over time the fingerprint can grow back in the same way it was. Here comes another question. Why does everyone have a fingerprint? The reason for this is that 
Two factors affect the pattern. The first factor is the genes. Twins often have their fingerprints somewhat similar and also similar to their parents, but yet there are differences between them that are very obvious, and these differences are due to the other factor that affects the fingerprint. The other factor is the many surrounding conditions that affect the fetus when present in the mother's uterus. This means that everything the fetus is exposed to affects the shape of the fingerprint in one way or another. Blood pressure, oxygen levels in the blood, nutrition of the mother, the level of hormones, the exact position of the fetus in the mother's uterus, and the length of the umbilical cord, as well as the fluid that surrounds him or her. Because there is no way that the same environmental conditions can be created with the same precision again for anyone else, there is no chance of forming the same pattern of fingerprint twice. So even if twins are genetically identical, the pressure and conditions they experience are not the same. So their fingerprints are different. Okay, let's ask another important question. Can fingerprints change over time? We're asking this because when older people get their fingerprints checked, they find it's kind of different from what it was in their youth. Does that mean that fingerprints actually change over time? Actually, no. Human fingerprints are the same throughout one's life and does not change from the first moments it is formed. As for the elderly, who think it is a little different from what it was in their early life, what's actually happening with them is not change in the shape of the fingerprint, but a contraction in their skin or a lack of elasticity in the skin, which makes it seem like the fingerprint is changing. But the fingerprint can be deformed due to wounds or burns and some skin injuries that can affect the shape of the fingerprint and its features, as you may find in workers, especially construction workers, and also people who wash dishes constantly. They lose some detail of their fingerprint. And the good thing is that once the causative agent is gone, the fingerprint starts to regain its old pattern again, because it grows from the bottom of the skin. The strange information about fingerprints is that they can survive even after death, if they are preserved throughout embedding or refrigerators. At the end, the fingerprint remains the natural identity given to us by our God. When you lose your ID card, or your driver license, or even your passport, your strongest identity among them all remains, which is your fingerprint. And so we've answered the questions of why there aren't two people in this world with the same fingerprint. If it's your first time on this channel, this channel is made to interpret strange phenomena and answers the questions that come to your mind. And as usual, if you have a question, write it in the comment section below the video, and we will answer it in a new video. And if you like the video, hit the subscribe button and the like button so that you're always up to date with our channel videos. Have a good day.